Welcome to the TBI Innovator Series. We believe it's critical to harness innovation if we're to take on the challenges of COVID-19. In this clip, we speak to Lex Luxus, CEO of Fortify Industries, and Professor Yanis Ventikos, a professor from UCL who is collaborating with Fortify Industries on a project to develop a reusable mask. Lex, perhaps you could start by telling us a little more about the mask yeah, so this is the um, shielding system mask. Um, the second version of the mask looks incredibly similar. Um, this is um, uh, kite marked the standard EN166, which is a, a simple shield, facial shield system. But unlike a lot of the facial shields, this seals off around the face. Um, it's made of a hard PP plastic and it has an inhalation exhalation valve. The role of a mask like this then is not necessarily to protect the wearer per se, but more to protect the people around them from transmission. So I would say it does both to a certain extent, but of course the primary duty of this device is uh, to protect the wearer. Uh, here in the tube, someone sneezes, even far, far away. So that is a very fast jet of contaminants coming to you, towards your face. Our modeling has shown that uh, the wear of the mask is actually protected pretty much perfectly from this kind of contamination. Uh, because the mask has a hard, uh, is a hard container effectively, uh, it doesn't allow of a lot of contaminants from the wearer to go to the, to the outside world. How does wearing one of your masks differ from say, wearing a disposable surgical mask or a, a custom-made mask? There are huge um, downsides to wearing custom-made fabric masks. They can build up CO2 behind the mask, which we've obviously seen reports of people um, passing out whilst driving, um, and this can be very dangerous. Surely government is banging down your door to get hold of one of these? And banging down our door? No. I understand that there are conflicting reports on the need for filtration. Nobody wants to be the first person to say, I don't think it's totally necessary. At the moment, it seems like it's still um, a, a, a trying to find solutions to make the reusable PPE um, to stem the crisis that's happening right now. How many of these masks could you make? We could be starting now and in about three weeks time be delivering 30,000 a week with an incremental week on week increase rising to that 850,000 in about 12 weeks time. With an investment of around um, 5 million, we could deliver a, around 30 million on, in year one. What would the price point be for a mask, say in the B2C market? The blended um, price of the product would be around six pounds. Um, we're very much underestimating the lifespan of the project, the product of about 350 washes. Um, but if you compare that to the disposable masks, it's far beneficial to having single use masks. I did a, a tiny little calculation how much we would need to, to spend as a household in order to provide anyone, everyone at home with uh, the cheap uh, you know, disposable masks. And I ended up with an amount between uh, 60 and 80 uh, pounds a month. Most reusable PPE cannot be recycled and it has to be disposed of in landfill. And so it was very key for all of us to make something that was 100% recyclable. Yanis, Lex, thank you so much for your time. Um, really is good to hear from you. Uh, the product sounds fantastic. We wish you all the luck in the world in terms of getting off the ground and congratulate you on the work that you're doing with your innovations in COVID-19. Thank you so much.